Welcome to the CodeCast Podcast. Real-world insights for your daily medical coding and billing processes. And now, here's your host, Terry Fletcher. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 112th episode of the CodeCast Podcast today. I'm back today with my modifier spotlights, as promised, and today we'll focus on CPT modifiers 24 and 57. These podcasts have been very popular and well received, so I appreciate that, everybody. It seems to be I'm clearing up some confusion on how to use these modifiers. And also, you should know the 24 modifier is always on the OIG watch list, as well as the number two reason for rack denials. So it's important that you get it right, and we want to make sure that you do that. But first, the CodeCast podcast is brought to you today by Land Rover USA. Explore the winter wonderlands behind the wheel of a new discovery sport, LandRoverUSA.com. And Health Tech Magazine, tech issues facing healthcare leaders. Sign up for timely insights free at healthtechmagazine.net forward slash subscribe. Okay, so let's take a look at the 24 and the 57. So you should know what these modifiers mean before we actually get into it. And modifiers are found in the back of your CPT book. So uh, right after you hit all of your codes, then you will find Appendix A is where the modifiers come from. And you'll see them, they also will, um, so they kind of hover there, and then you'll see them throughout your CPT book how in relationship to whatever code pairs you're actually using that day. But the 24 modifier, this is an ENM modifier, so an evaluation and management modifier. And per the CPT book, it says, unrelated evaluation and management service by the same physician or other qualified healthcare professional during a post-operative period. So the physician or other healthcare or the qualified healthcare professional may need to indicate that an evaluation and management service was performed during the post-op period for a reason unrelated to the original procedure. And they say in this circumstance, then you can append the modifier 24 to the visit code that day or the ENM service. So when we talk about that post-op period, the reason there needs to be a modifier is because when you take on a patient and you perform a service, the that has a global days on it whether it be 10 or 90 and global days are 0 10 or 90 so some procedures don't have any global days meaning that there is an anticipation that they're going to come back into the office maybe once maybe not for a follow-up visit and so they don't have to include it in the relative value units or the value for that procedure There's also an assumption that certain codes like debridements, wound care, laceration repairs, things like that, patients usually come in to have it rechecked within that 10-day period post-procedure, and so that would be included in some of those services. And then there's a 90-day post-operative period, meaning that you have a major surgery and the patient now is going to come in to have that uh, wound site checked to make sure there's no hematomas, there's no issues around the uh, site where the device was implanted, where the surgery was performed, and that there are evaluative um, elements to that surgery as well, pre and post-op. And so you want to make sure that if you're going to try to capture an additional visit in that post-op period, that you are doing it correctly and you're not trying to capture something that isn't appropriate given the circumstances. So let's take a look at that uh, from some examples. So let's say a surgeon performs a puncture aspiration of an abscess on the patient's right outer thigh. So your CPT code would be 10160. Well, that code comes with a 10-day global period. So let's say they did that on January 1st of this year, and the same patient returns on January 5th for some reason other than what was uh, performed. So for a different reason than that abscess, let's say that they had abdominal pain. Well, that's unrelated to that abscess uh, aspiration. So now you can code, let's say a 99213 or 214, depending on your documentation with a 24 modifier. And you also wanna make sure that you're not assigning the same diagnosis, which was the reason for the per- first procedure, um, that because that would be a strong chance that you'd get a denial. And it doesn't have anything to do with why they're coming into the office now. So it, it is appropriate in that circumstance to not only bill the first procedure, and then within that 10 day global, if the patient comes in for another problem, then you can get paid for that office visit, again, as long as it is unrelated 
to in that post-op period to the original procedure. So another example, uh, let's say the patient had a device implant, so maybe a pacemaker, on November 25th of this year and returned to the clinic for a post-implant check. During this check, the patient experienced lightheadedness, dizziness, and the physician changed the parameters on the device. So, you know, pacemakers are pacing the heart. Is this a 24 modifier? No, this is still related to the device implant. And the only thing that would be coded that day would be your post-op visit, the 99024, just as a placeholder to say that the patient was there. So that's another thing with the 24 modifier. And I think this is why it's such a big alert for not only the OIG watch list, but also for rack auditors is because sometimes the physicians or the coders are not understanding some of the sign and symptoms that go with a major procedure. And so when you're dealing with uh, device implants is a perfect example for pacemakers, lightheadedness and dizziness sometimes go with that implant. And that's one of the reasons that's actually a characteristic of atrial fibrillation and things like that. So it's important to understand how that all works. So another example would be a patient, let's take that same patient that was post-op from the device implant on November 25th. So now the patient comes back in during their post-op period and really the e &M encounter documentation looked like it was checking on the patient's wound site, asking them about how they're feeling, any issues with their pacemaker. But the hypertension diagnosis was added to the encounter. And upon review of that documentation, there was no concern for an elevated blood pressure. There was no adjustment to medication. There was no change in treatment protocol for the diagnosis of hypertension. So is there a visit because they added another diagnosis? The answer is no. So you would not have anything unless you address a problem and then deal with it. So here's the last example on the 24, and this might shed some light on this. So again, I'm going to refer back to the same patient. They come in a month later. So you're still in the 90 day global. Now they have swelling of her lower right extremity. And also she feels some weakness in her right wrist and headaches. The physician orders some labs, does a full workup and a Doppler study because he's concerned with pre-stroke like symptoms. Yes, this is an ENM with a 24 modifier, probably with a full workup, a 99214, with a diagnosis of R60.0 for right lower extremity edema. So this is where you can see it was completely unrelated to what the original procedure was as far as the device implant, and now we're dealing with the lower half of the body. So just make sure that if you're gonna use that 24 modifier, that you are compliant and not just trying to get another visit in there. And the reason I say that, and no disrespect meant to anybody who does use this modifier, is just that it's really in the hot seat and a lot of physicians don't like their global period. They just don't like it. And so they feel like, you know what, I'm gonna get go around it and just put in a different diagnosis and now I can bill for a visit code. And that is not the case. As an auditor, I would have a field day with that. So be careful with that. So let's switch gears now to the 57 modifier. So what this is, is this is used to indicate that an evaluation management service, so again, a visit code, resulted in the initial decision to perform surgery either the day before a major surgery with 90 day global or the day of the major surgery. So, and I, I hate to put this in here, but this is also if it's a week earlier, because I see some practices saying, well, come in for a pre-op and just come in a week earlier and I can still get a visit out of that. But this is where it's, it's something that was an emergent in nature. So the patient came in and they're saying, we gotta take you to surgery. And because any kind of uh, E&M service that's the day of surgery tends to be bundled or inclusive, you need to protect that decision for surgery E&M. And that's what this modifier is for. So there was a fact sheet put out by Novitas Medicare and also Noridian and appropriate uses I should say uses, says append only the ENM where the decision to perform surgery is made the day of or day before major surgery during an ENM service. So they're basically saying, again, this is protection. Now, inappropriate uses would be appending to a surgical procedure code. Don't do that. Appending to an ENM procedure code performed the same day as a minor surgery or procedure 
or when the decision to perform a minor procedure is done immediately before the service, it is considered a routine pre-op service and not billable in addition to the procedure. That was a big one that came up. It also says do not report on the day of surgery for a pre-planned or pre-scheduled surgery. Uh, Do not report on the day of the surgery if the surgical procedure indicates performance in multiple sessions or stages, so bilateral, for example. And then CPT guidelines adds to this. It says do not allow separate payment for an E&M service to clear a patient for surgery. After the decision for surgery has been made, stating evaluation and management services subsequent to the decision for surgery on the day before and or day of surgery, including history and physical, are included in addition to the operation. And the, the thing that comes up quite a bit is I get doctors saying, well, I have to do paperwork for the hospital and they've already been seen in the office and a decision's been made. So now in the hospital, they do the H&P that's required by the hospital for administrative purposes and they try to put a 57 modifier on that to get it paid, which is inappropriate. First of all, you don't have three out of three components for the initial hospital codes, 99221 to 99223. Your medical decision was already made in the office, so you lost your third component. And so that would be inappropriate use. On the fact sheet, it also says global period includes day before surgery, day of surgery, and number of days following surgery. So a major surgery has 90-day post-operative period, and a minor surgery has either 0 or 10 days. And again, for those, you wouldn't use the 57. Pre-op period is the day before surgery or the day of surgery. And that an ENM resulting in initial decision to perform major surgery is furnished during post-op period of another procedure, if that happens, then the ENM service must be billed with both the 24 and the 57 modifier. And that was one of the reasons that I wanted to uh, highlight these modifiers and focus on them in a t- together, because sometimes you have to use them together. Now, and this all comes from the, um, not just the CPT book, but Medicare Claims Processing Manual, Chapter 12, Section 40. So if you need to look that up. But here are some examples for the 57. So patient presents emergently to the ER with right lower quadrant abdominal pain. The physician determines this is appendicitis and after an initial evaluation, uh, makes the decision to take the patient in for emergent appendectomy. So your E&M service with a detailed history, detailed exam, and medical decision making of high complexity would be 99221, 57 modifier, mainly because the history and physical. And then with abdominal pain as a diagnosis. So for that one, I would be using the R10.31. And then the 44960 for the appendectomy. And then you have to determine whether it was uh, ruptured or non-ruptured for your diagnosis. And that's actually a a ruptured CPT code. So you need to know what the end result was for that to link that ICD-10 to that procedure. Example two, patient presents to the ortho office with what appears to be a sprained wrist. After evaluation and x-rays, the physician determines that the patient has a closed Collie's fracture of the right radius, initial encounter. So that's 552.531A. A is that last digit that reflects the encounter or um, when it happens. So is this the first time you see them, the subsequent or sequela? And then the ENM probably would be somewhere in the 99203 range with a 57 modifier. And then the physician performs closed treatment of distal radial fracture with manipulation, which would be 25605. To make sure you get paid for both, you would absolutely need the 57 modifier on that ENM service, even in the office setting. Example three, and listen closely to this one. Patient presents to the ER with chest pain and the EKG is abnormal. The physician performs an initial outpatient visit and takes the patient in for a cardiac cath to determine the problem, see if they need intervention. The code is 99204, and then they ended up doing a heart cath 93458 with a 26 modifier. So what goes on the 204? Well, not the 57 modifier because there are no global days on heart caths. They have, um, that they're zero. So you would not need the 57 in that circumstance. So see how that works. You have to know your global days. You can get a list from Medicare and just make sure that you are not over coding or over modifying that area so that you can do it correctly. Okay, so let's get, I know we've been doing modifiers, let's get to our coding question. And actually I'm in the integumentary system or the skin area this week. And I have a client that is dealing with wound care. And she says, I have a patient that needed a debridement of necrotic sub-Q tissue on his calf. 
The area needing to breeded is from an ulcer measuring four centimeters by four centimeters on his outer calf, but over half of the ulcer was healed com- according to the documentation. The surgeon stated that she debrided narcotic tissue on a one by one centimeter by one centimeter section. How do I code for this? Okay, so code selection is based on the one by one centimeter section or one square centimeter. So the code for this case would be 11042 debridement sub-Q tissue first 20 centimeters or less. You have to have that area that you actually debrided and it's uh, width, width and length. Our coding question was brought to you today by Movado Watches, one of the world's leading watchmakers, Movado, modern, ahead of its time, movado.com. Okay, so it's raining outside, personal tidbit today. Hopefully you'll find this interesting or funny or whatever. I'm going to get on one of my pet peeves. I'm having a moment. So, (laughs) you know, everybody, I love Starbucks, right? It's just who I am. I go to Starbucks. I, I drink coffee every day, but I don't drink their coffee every day. It's a little too strong. But I'm a frequent Starbucks visitor. And about two to three times a week, I get my coffee there in the morning, a grande blonde roast with cream. But every day, every single day, because I do webinars and I do podcasts, obviously, and I'm speaking a lot, I get a Vente black iced tea, no sweetener, extra ice. And I've started this thing with a nitro lid. It's the lid that doesn't need a straw so I can sip my tea. So yesterday I go through the Starbucks and it's a drive through and the first guy in the drive through woke just named, call him John. Um, and he's not a good one. I've, I've dealt with him before. He always gets my order wrong. And I'm like, great. So, and there was a long wait. I should have just walked in. But he doesn't get the urgency or the quickness on your feet. You have to have to be in the drive through So I was just like, here we go. So I start my order. And I think you know where I'm going to go with this. And I'm really slow, methodical. So he hears me. I say, hi, John, because he puts his name there. I said, can I please have a Vente? black iced tea. And before I can say anything else, he interrupts me and he says, are you sure you don't want a Trenta? It's only 80 cents more. I'm like, no, I would like a Vente black iced tea extra. And he interrupts me again and said, so black tea, not green tea or matcha tea. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. No, but can I finish my order without you interrupting me, please? Crickets. He said nothing. And I'm like, I come in twice a day for the same thing. So and he's like, oh, sure. Go ahead. I said, so again, Vente, (laughs) black iced tea, extra ice, no sweetener with the nitro lid, please. He says nothing. I'm like, hello? He goes, I'll have your total at the window. I'm like, okay, he's now going to spit in my drink. Great. So I get to the window and he hands me my tea with the wrong lid, of course. So I hand it back and I said, can you switch this to the nitro lid? He's like, oh, right, right, right. And I get the eye roll. So I pay and leave. I take a drink as I'm already out of the drive-thru and I almost have to spit it out. And let me read you what my cup said. (laughs) And I shouldn't have to check this, by the way. It said Vente black iced tea, extra liquid cane sugar, extra ice, and caramel syrup, and a nitro lid. So I said no sweetener. And I not only got caramel syrup, ew, and I got extra, and I got extra cane sugar, and no lid, which he had to change out. I'm like, WTF? Okay, see, I didn't even use profanity on here. So luckily, the line for the drive through is not long because I went back around. I'm just like, you know what? This is a mission. This is ridiculous. And I'm thinking John's still on the drive through He wasn't. So it was a gal. And I'm like, you got my tea wrong. So you need to, it was a mistake. So can I just tell you what I want? She's like, sure. Easy as pie. So I tell her what I want. I go up to the counter, hand her my mistake drink and go read that. And she goes, ew. I'm like, exactly. People, you want $15 an hour to work at Starbucks, to work at McDonald's, to work at these places. You need to earn it. Okay, I'm good now. Just saying, thanks guys for letting me rant. That was really bugging me yesterday and nothing bothers me more than somebody who interrupts and doesn't listen. Oh my gosh, you have to listen to people and then respond. That's my lesson for today. So anyway, everybody, that's it for me on this Terry Tuesday. Make it a great day and a great week. And thank you for listening to the CodeCast podcast. For more information on medical coding, billing, auditing, and compliance, including how to hire Terry, follow Terry on Twitter at TerryCoder1 or visit her website at www.terryfletcher.net. Podcast producer Joe Kuzma. Music producer Assassin Music. <laughs>